Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. That was me using Magnum Buckshot, Magnum Slugs to recoil test the Enforce WMLX. It's a 500 lumen weapon light with an integrated mount. And after trying a bunch of different lights, a bunch of different mounts, it rose to the top as my choice for my home defense build project with the Mossberg 590A1. And that's why it's coming up next on Twang and Bang. It used to be that you had to choose between a constant on version and the Haley Strategic Momentary Only version of the WML. Now you don't have to decide which to get because the new WML gives you the benefits of both. It has an LED selection lever on the left side, allowing you to select either a constant on clicky style switch mode to the front or a momentary only switch mode to the rear. The WML uses one 123A battery and is rated for 200 lumens for one and a half hours. Waterproof to 20 meters, it weighs only 3 ounces or 85 grams including battery, making it one of the lightest weapon lights available. The WMLX is its bigger brother, using two 123As to power a 500 lumen LED rated for 2 hours. Both share the same shape from the mode selection lever on back to the switch, and both share the same integrated Picatinny mount which will save you both weight and expense over other weapon lights. The light head is larger on the X to accommodate a larger vented heat sink that will allow the LED to operate indefinitely without damaging the light or its fiber composite body. Both lights are extremely low profile with great ergonomics. Both the new WML and the WMLX work the same way. When the selection lever is forward, the lights are in a constant on mode with a high strobe and off position. You can also get momentary on if you hold the button for at least half a second, but I've found that mode to be very tricky to modulate. That's why I was so excited that Enforce now incorporates a momentary only mode on both of the lights. In this mode, there isn't any way for the light to accidentally get switched to constant on or strobe or off. Whatever your thumb is doing is exactly what the light is doing. There's some really cool design features incorporated into the WMLX and the switch mode WML that aren't necessarily obvious just by reading the feature list or playing around with the lights for a little bit. Carried over from the original WML is the safety lever that blocks the button so that you reduce the chance of having an accidental discharge of the light. Human nature being the way it is, you might forget to move it out of the way when you get to the point where you want to use the light. But that's not a problem the way they designed this because you can still, in an emergency, get your thumb behind that bar and activate the light. I really like the way that's thought out. One of the things that I noticed that was missing from the, the WMLX and the switch mode WML that the standard WML had, the original WML had, is a low intensity setting on the click mode switch. And I thought that was a pretty handy setting if you're going to be in a click mode, but when I talked to Enforce about it, they had a really good reason for dropping it. And it comes down to this. Most military law enforcement, if you go to training like I've had for lights, you're not using strobe function anymore. And they have the, the programming in this light so that you can turn it off. And that's what most of the military and law enforcement customers are doing. You back the head off about one turn, hold the power button down and screw it back on. And now you have only on and off with the click mode switch. But like me, most military and law enforcement are running it in momentary only mode. And so there's never a chance where you're going to accidentally have that light on when you don't want it on. But in a situation where you do want to have light on and you don't want to use your support hand to keep it on, you still have the ability to flip that switch forward, click the light on. You're only going to have the light on or off if you get to a position where now you want to turn it off fast. You're not going to accidentally end up in a low light mode. You're not going to actually end up in a strobe mode. Actually, even when you have it on, you can just flip the lever back and it turns it off and you're back into instant on mode. And once they explained that to me, it was really obvious why they set up the programming with the WMLX and the switch mode WML the way they did. And I think it's a really good idea. The integrated Picatinny mount is one of the best features of these lights and it's very easy to use. Just back the thumb wheel all the way out, line up the recoil lug with the slot of your choice and pop the light onto the rail. Tighten the thumb wheel and the light is locked into place. Because it's spring loaded, the mount is extremely resistant to coming loose due to recoil. Light can happen to many standard Picatinny accessories. 
there are a couple of ways that you might mount a light onto a shotgun. The most common way, the old school way, is to use some sort of a mount that sits between the magazine tube and the barrel, and then that clamps the light in one place. The problem for me is that I just can't reach out that far, even with a stock that's set to my length. And even if I did reach out to turn the light on or turn it off, I can't modulate it and still be in a firing position. I can't control the light while I'm cycling the action. So that's why I was really excited to get the MOE 4 end on this 590A1 so that I could mount a light right in the palm of my hand. With the MOE mounts, you have two ways that you can still mount a light onto the fore end. One is with the standard Picatinny rail, which is what I decided to go with. Uh, Magpul also makes this MOE light mount that is cantilevered and comes up and places the switch of something like an Enforce in a perfect position. And I really love the way it feels. But this is why you always test out your equipment on the range before you put it to use in home defense in a military or law enforcement situation. And that's because as I aim this shotgun, I'm a point shooter. I shoot with both eyes open. My thumb, this light, are, are right in the way of my field of view. And I was finding that I was aiming over the top of my thumb instead of aiming over the top of the barrel. That could be a total personal problem. Doesn't matter. This, this mount, this setup might work great for you. I found it just does not work for me, which is why I decided to stick with side mounting using a standard Picatinny rail. Here's some testing I did with the WMLX in the constant on mode. And as you can see, I just cannot make the momentary only feature work in this mode. I think that I'm only activating the light at the shot, then turning it off in between, but I'm getting on, off, strobe. It's pretty random, and it's why I'm just not a fan of multi-mode constant on switches no matter who's making it. With the selection lever to the rear, however, I get exactly what I want from the Enforce lights, even under the force of recoil. The light's on when I want it on and off when I want it off. These new WMLs fit perfectly with how I want to use a weapon light. Cameras will never do a flashlight justice at night outside, but I wanted to show why I went with the 500 lumen WMLX for this build project. This shotgun isn't just an HD gun, but it will also double as four-legged critter control, so being able to light up my backyard is a valued feature. The 200 lumen WML still does a good job of illuminating that statue that's a little over 40 yards away, but it just isn't designed for this kind of use. The WMLX also does a great job of illuminating an entire room no matter where you center the beam. Though I don't recommend walking around your house with the light activated, this demo gives you an idea for how useful the WMLX is for quickly seeing what's in a dark room and differentiating between friend and foe. That said, the 200 lumen WML is still plenty for indoor use, and it's less likely to blind you from the reflection off something like a white wall or a mirror or a kitchen appliance. If I didn't have the need for the throw of the WMLX outside, I'd gladly pick the WML for home defense. In case you're not familiar with my channel, it's helpful to know that this is actually the fourth video in a build series that I'm doing on the Mossberg 590A1. I started by introducing you to the 51411, which is the model number of Mossberg's most basic 590A1 with the 18 and a half inch barrel. It's a great shotgun for home defense just the way it is, and you can get one for about $425. I then added this machine steel plus two extension from S&J Hardware because I don't know of a tougher extension than this one. I don't know one that's more appropriate for the 590A1 than S&J Hardware's plus two extension. I then took the standard stock set off and replaced it with the Magpul SGA and MOE4 end. Of course, you can get this set up directly from Mossberg, and I highly recommend it because it makes the 590A1 fit a whole lot better. Uh, not just your body style, but also your shooting style. Those two modifications are modifications you can easily make and get a whole lot of use out of without any additional shotgun training. I waited until now to put a weapon light on because this is the first modification that I'm recommending that I also recommend you get additional training to make sure you use it right. A weapon light is not something you slap on a shotgun or a carbine or a pistol and then you own the night. 
the risk that you are taking by using one, the risk that you might be placing others under by using one, and getting professional training is the best way to figure out where to draw the line on those things. If you want to learn more about the Enforce WMLX and the new Switch Mode WML, be sure to click the link in the video description below. If you like this video, please take the time to log in and click the like button. YouTube needs to know that you like firearms oriented programming. If you'd like to help this channel even more, click here to see how you can contribute to my Patreon campaign. And be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool things, including the rest of this build project. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.